right, welcome again to a new season of the big match. And as usual, three matches for you today. Our main match sees the arrival in the first division of Bristol City and their visit yesterday to Arsenal at Highbury. We're going to back that up with Ipswich Town against Spurs. And for a couple of minutes, we're also going to dip into the third division to bring you an amazing own goal that decided the game between Tranmere Rovers and Chester. But first today, we go off to Highbury, where Alan Ball leads out the Arsenal side into the London sunshine, everywhere the hopes are high for a successful season. And a huge part of the 41,000 crowd have been tempted along for a first glimpse in an Arsenal shirt of Malcolm McDonald, the striker they brought from Newcastle United in the summer for £333,000. Supermac, powerful and successful goal scorer, 24 last season for Newcastle United, and he's the man they hope will get Arsenal back on a winning run. And certainly the warmth of his reception from the fans suggests that they believe that he can do it for them. So here then is how McDonald takes his place in an Arsenal side that suffered a late and significant setback. Liam Brady is lost to the midfield, he's got tonsillitis, he looks so good in pre-season games. So there's another game for George Armstrong in the number eight shirt. But here come Bristol City, 65 years since they played in the first division, thriving on good teamwork last season and the excellent work of manager Alan Dix. But it was noticeable how many of them arrived at Highbury's front door this afternoon and had to ask which way to go. It really is a new world for them. But their team is a settled one. It's the one that basically saw them up from the second division. And in the side are two men that Arsenal themselves badly wanted to buy uh, for a good part of last season. One of them is the Bristol City skipper wearing the number six shirt, Jeff Merrick, a disciplined and stylish defender. The other is uh, striker Tom Ritchie from Scotland, 19 goals last season. The referee, Gordon Q of Amersham, starting his last season on the list. So a wide scene of sunlit Highbury as Malcolm McDonald, the most expensive feat in the game, getting this new season underway. And there he is, quickly in the action now for Arsenal in their famous red and white shirts. Attacking the goal to our right against Bristol City, newly up from the second division in white shirts, a chain strip with black shorts. Whitehead, Collier, the long ball forward, and uh, Gordon Q, the referee, spotting an Arsenal foul there, giving Bristol City a free kick. A side who last played in the first division 65 years ago. So what a tremendous day it is for the Bristol City club. Gary Collier with the long, long free kick. High into that Arsenal penalty area. Rimmer safely underneath it. Though. shouting for it, glancing off the top of his head. He's a man under enormous pressure this afternoon, Malcolm McDonald, badly wanting to give the right impression to this big Highbury crowd. Armstrong getting in quickly, the referee quite rightly allowing the play to go on. Good sign there, but he won't allow that to go on. A foul by Jimmy Mann and Alan Ball, and a free kick to Arsenal. Ball taking it quickly, Radford hoping to get first there, and the ball coming through to Cashman. Nearly got in behind that Bristol City defence there. Just wondering how their nerves will settle down, as indeed Malcolm McDonald's will in this situation here. Man for Bristol City. Oh, a slippery customer, but he had no support up there in the box, when most he wanted it. Properly, who's hardly had a touch so far. That's not a bad one, though. Trying to send Ross on his way, shrugging off that challenge, though, of Whitehead. Ross now for Arsenal, coming forward hard, and uh, Jeff Merrick there making a timely interception before it could come through to McDonald. And now a counter attack now led by Clive Whitehead for Bristol City. Here's Paul Cheesley. Couldn't quite get his shot in because O'Leary did extremely well. Good challenge now by Nelson, and away it goes properly. Good stuff at the moment. And the shot blocked by Collier. Armstrong hoping to get in. Will he catch it on the volley? A little chip in there, no problem for Cashley. But a nice bit of cut and thrust there. Armstrong clipping it in. But never a problem. Oh, beautiful control there by Richie, although he didn't quite get away with it in the end. Whitehead. Ross. Ball. Nelson. Again, that long ball. And the linesman on the far side rather late putting up his flag. 
and it really was a hairline decision. Uh, certainly the impression that I had was that when the ball was actually played, Radford was fractionally onside, but the linesman, who was rather delayed in putting up his flag, decided that it was offside. Cashley certainly came out of his goal at a rate of knots. He was well outside the box when he uh, fly-hacked it away. Collier with the... Good long high one again there towards Cheesley. Won it well in the air. Richie just over the top and very little to spare. A long, long free kick. A good, beautiful jump there by Cheesley. And just look how quickly Richie left everybody and just over the top. Copley hoping to get a shot in but beaten away by a quick intervention by Jerry Gow. Here's Gow again. Sweeney and O'Leary. Ball. Now Simpson. Again, the ball hit high towards the front runners. This time, Ball getting in well there. And it'll come to Cashley, a fraction before Malcolm McDonald. Nice little jump there by Radford. Look how quickly Ball was filling that space. And it didn't quite run for McDonald. Straight to Cashley. Simpson. Ross must have just touched the arm of Tainton, which gives Arsenal another free kick, which Alan Ball will take. Played through for Radford. He tried to get it back to McDonald, but the service wasn't there. McDonald doing a lot of clapping to try and encourage his teammates. Drysdale to Ritchie for Bristol City. Tainton, a nice little touch there now for Jimmy Mann. Played on again by Chesley for Mann. And the shot. Man there with a shot. Topped his head. And won by Radford. Merrick turning it on for Sweet. Oh, a good break there by Cheesley. Remmer's got to come out a long way and does so. But the Arsenal defence caught a little square there and a beautifully timed run by Paul Cheesley. Tainton now for Bristol City. Simpson, gently back. Radford's header. Brian Drysdale with the throw. Oldest man on Bristol City's books at 33. And trying to get Richie on his way. And he lost it well there. Simpson's good judgment. Still the ball finding its way to White. Ross, oh! almost an own goal there, but for the quick reactions of goalkeeper Jimmy River. And it was sort of toe poked into the centre there, and having controlled it, well, his heart was almost stopping there. Well, he got ball at the second attempt, the ball was fractionally offside, good linesman decision on the far side. Whitehead for Bristol City. Sweeney playing it forward for Cheesley.
Richie. Gal. Man. And again, Collier getting above the Arsenal striker, this time Radford to head it away. Sammy Nelson with the throw. Collier getting the better of McDonald. City fans who are here at Highbury getting a little cocky saying what a load of rubbish to Arsenal and the North Bank answering with a few cries of the Arsenal. And certainly Bristol City look well in control of themselves at the moment. Here's Richie. Stopped by Simpson but it only comes to Whitehead. A little chip coming in towards Sheasley. Oh how unlucky he was! Hitting the foot of that to Arsenal post with a beautifully timed header from the Bristol City number 10. Good play here by Whitehead, a really delicate little cross. And Cheesley getting up above O'Leary against the post. Here's Armstrong. Donald Armstrong Good throw by Armstrong McDonald hoping to catch that in characteristic way on that famous left foot but it was a couple of yards too high but he's been kept quiet for rather a long time by Gary Collier but there's a warning of just how he can explode Taking that on his chest first of all, on his left foot on the volley, but just that much too high. Did in the middle of the field at the moment. It's uh, Tainton and Gao and Jimmy Mann who've had rather the better of things in that area for Bristol City. Here's Gao again. Really tough little worker. Drysdale. Good run here by Mann. And Armstrong going back and he's left Armstrong still with Jimmy Mann. Played back this time to Cheesley and he didn't quite catch it properly as Nelson got in there and half stopped him. But another very good raid indeed by Bristol City. When Mann had left George Armstrong, Arsenal were in trouble. The little played back there. And Cheesley couldn't quite make it. A free kick then to Arsenal. But as we come to the last ten minutes of the first half, no doubt in my mind at the moment, which side looks the better outfit, and that's Bristol City, the newly promoted side. But here's Armstrong, dinking one in towards Radford. Collier nicely behind him to head it away. Tainton half lost it and found it again. Here's Drysdale. Man. Drysdale. Man. Gow being hustled off the ball by Armstrong. Here's Alan Ball now, properly playing it, first of all, to Ross. And it's just past that Bristol City post. That looked a bit better for Arsenal. Good combination there after Bristol City had lost it dangerously on the edge of their own area. Played there by Alan Ball. Played back by Cropley to Ross, who's got quite a powerful shot on him, but not quite on that occasion. Simpson back to Rimmer. Jimmy, Jimmy. 
It's a better throw. Finding Rice. Radford on the far side. Breaking off that challenge of Whitehead. Hit low this time to McDonald. Ball to Ross. Armstrong again. Did very well indeed. McDonald right in there. On the turn, just wide. Well, that's drawn some applause from the Arsenal fans. McDonald showing his hunger for goal there, but Armstrong also showing he's got a lot of skill left. And he really pounced on that one. Not his favourite foot, but he very nearly made something of it. So five minutes to half time, still nil nil. Here's Rice. Beautiful conditions, there's uh, quite a nice little breeze blowing at the moment. And I can't remember when I've seen the Arsenal pitch looking better. Radford. No, it wouldn't quite reach McDonald, but he very nearly made something of it. Nelson in, oh, he's given it to Richie. Played first time for Whitehead. Richie now waiting in the middle for the return. There's another lovely little chip there by Richie, and it'll come through to Jimmy Mann. Played for Tainter. Now, will he get a shot in? Oh, a great shot! Calling for a great save, which it got from River. Tremendous drive there by Tainton. He really caught that superbly, Trevor Tainton, who's had a fine game in the middle of the field for Bristol City. And a great save by Rimmer. Rice and Armstrong. Working so hard for each other, Bristol City. Covering and fighting and then covering a bit more. Hustling when uh, a man is on the ball, as they say, closing him down very quickly. And they just don't know at the moment what to do with it, Arsenal. Back with ball again. He's got a yard, but Gow is coming for him. It's Drysdale closing a bit on Armstrong, but still he gets it across there. And McDonald was in there, but only pushing it on the back of Collier. So applause from the young Bristol City centre-half for that refereeing decision. Armstrong slinging across a very dangerous-looking cross. But a push there by McDonald on the number five. Both linesmen having signalled that half time should be here. 45 minutes are up, and indeed they are. A very good first 45 minutes for Bristol City, although it stays at 0 0. It's they who've really made the running, and they who've. Uh, Brought some saves out of Jimmy Rimmer, and of course, Paul Cheesley has also headed the ball against the foot of the Arsenal post. So, a very good first half for the newcomers. A half time score at Highbury Arsenal nil, Bristol City nil, and we'll be back with you with the second half. So, welcome back to Highbury. Nil nil at half time. Bristol City now in the white, attacking the goal to our right. Got a good defensive record, and it's not difficult to see why after they've played so well in defence this afternoon. But they conceded only 21 goals in 21 away games last season in the second division. And here they come again with Jerry Sweeney, number two. Well, he's been allowed to go a long way, he might even get a shot in. No, it's with Tom Ritchie instead, but he stayed right up there, and Paul Cheesley on the far side, waiting to get the header in, which he does. Oh, and it almost caught him out. Well, he's dynamite in the air, and Ritchie knew it as he slung that long crossover. Cheesley on the far side again, he's already hit the post once in the first half, and he had Rimmer in certain difficulties there. So having looked so good and so compact in the first half, they come out to frighten Arsenal at the start of the second, these newcomers from the second division. Here's Mann with the corner this time for them, but not hit very well. 
Simpson to Armstrong. Who finished last, uh, 17th last season, Arsenal, in the first division. The worst position since 24-25. Really, only 24-25, and it uh, really is not a very promising opening 45 minutes for them so far. Missing, I'm quite sure, though, Liam Brady. A little Irishman in the middle of the field who's had a marvellous pre-season uh, for Arsenal. And certainly Alan Dix there, the Bristol City manager, must be very delighted indeed with his uh, form of his side so far. Did well to beat uh, Gar there. And he get the chance to get a shot in. There's a good shot. Oh, and it looked for a moment as though he was going to go in, but somehow it was pulled away by Cashley. Well, he's got a blast on him, Trevor Ross. And it's surprising how far they allowed him to go. The one serious mistake Bristol City have made in defence, and uh, Cashley whacking it away. Whitehead. Sweeney, throw to Bristol City. Jerry Sweeney, another Scott. The player also past the 30 mark. Whitehead, just 21. He was really going to enjoy himself in the first division, although he didn't beat Sammy Nelson there. There's Jerry Gow getting up. Painter. To wriggle free to find a yard or so of space. Here's Cheesley, who's looked very dangerous. What a good ball there for Richie. And he's hit well. And Rimmel couldn't be sure whether that was going just inside or just out, and he couldn't take a chance. Good combination there. Cheesley really improving with every minute. And he looked up for a moment, did Richie there, and whacked it in. In fact, it would have gone just outside, but Richie could, uh, Rimmer couldn't take that chance. It's Whitehead then with the corner for Bristol City. Gain towards Cheesley. Armstrong. Could be in trouble now. Sweeney. Oh, and it was hit too powerfully across there for Richie to be able to get up and direct it down. But a bad mistake there by George Armstrong. What a place to lose the ball deep in your own penalty area like that. Terry Neal sitting back there looking relaxed, but uh, it really hasn't been all that good for Arsenal so far. Richie again with that turn, again having his shirt tugged by Peter Simpson. And Ross finding McDonald. Ball. Ball again. The ball crossed in early and Gow getting behind it for Bristol City. Tainton to man. Scoop forward this time. Now Richie O'Right. He's onside. Now can he make something of this? He can't because O'Leary did a magnificent job in defence for Arsenal. The ball's still in play though. Richie recovering and finding Whitehead. Another nice little cross by him. Oh, no doubt about that one from Cheesley. He's put over so many lovely little crosses, Whitehead, and there was another of them. The marking very questionable there. The heading superb of Paul Cheesley, and Bristol City score their first goal back in the first division to go ahead of Arsenal by one goal to nil with 20 minutes of the second half gone. Well, that's a shock for Arsenal, but it can't have been a totally unexpected one because Bristol City have looked such a good side here this afternoon, quite unafraid at any thoughts that the First Division might have, any problems that the First Division might have in store for them. And Alan Dix chewing away there, 
a few smiles and a bit of relief in that Bristol City bench, knowing that they are doing a very good job so far on their return to the First Division. Well, Highbury, Terry Neal, Malcolm McDonald at the moment, having no fears for Bristol City. Richie again. Now Tainton. Now Gow. Here's Whitehead, the architect of that goal. You can hear a lot of him in the first division this season. Look at the way he got that one across as well, and it very nearly fell for Tom Ritchie until O'Leary got in there and got it away. And they're going to bring on a substitute. Copley is coming off, and Peter Storr is coming on. So Arsenal will bring on a substitute. Referee Gordon Kew hasn't spotted that Arsenal want to do that yet. Simpson calling Radford to him, and that's just what's happened. And now McDonald for Arsenal. Ball. McDonald again. Almost got his shot in, but then in the end, had to readjust and couldn't get the power. McDonald. For a moment, as though he wanted to belt it. I think coming up in a moment there, but he uh, couldn't quite make it, and in the end had to readjust and flick it in with the left foot. Long, long ball again, and there won't be many more chances. McDonald nodding that down. And a free kick given to Bristol City. Referee looking at his watch. And the Bristol City fans beginning to shout and cheer a little louder, and it's all over. Bristol City have come back to the first division with a victory. The last time the sides met was 1919-1920 in the FA Cup, and Bristol City won then by a goal to nil. Now they've done it again with this goal by Paul Cheesley in the second half. And it's a victory they thoroughly deserve. They've looked organised, they've looked sure of themselves, and they've got one or two young players like Clive Whitehead and Gary Collier, and indeed there are others too that the first division are going to hear a lot about in the next few months. So Bristol City, a job well done, and certainly question marks against Arsenal after this first disappointing performance of the new season. And a final scoreline, Arsenal nil, Bristol City one. So Arsenal caught napping by a really excellent Bristol City team performance there, and Malcolm McDonald eclipsed uh, by the new boys. Of course, it would be stupid to judge Malcolm on that one performance. His record over the years is far too good for that. But without question, the happiest man must have been the goal scorer, Paul Cheesley. And after the game, I suggested that Bristol City's performance had surprised a lot of people. Well, I think so, yes. Everybody's been writing us off all this last week in the uh, local press. Well, the local press hasn't been too bad, but the national press have written us off before we started. So, more than anything, we've been determined to go out and prove everybody wrong. And I think today showed a really good disciplined game for us. Did the fact that nobody gave you a great chance stimulate you? Um, I think it did, really, because... Uh, this side has got a lot of guts, you know, and uh, when people would turn around and say, we're a lot of non-tryers in this, we just want to go out and prove them wrong, which we did, I feel, mm. today. What about the thought of facing Malcolm McDonald? Did that present any fears for anybody? Um, no, I don't think so, really. Just probably that the back four had to be a little bit sharper because his reputation speaks for itself. But I think they contained him very well. What about before the game, coming to a place like Highbury and starting again in the first division? Were the lads a bit nervous? Yes, I think. Everybody was nervous, you know. I mean, only a few of us have played a couple of, well, a handful of first division games, and uh, it's a good prospect for us, you know. It was hard to explain, really, but they. they what what did you do about the nerves, though, Paul? Um, 
Well, we just turned around and tried to G each other up, you know, and get over it. And we were just dying to get on there to get over the nerves, you know. But once you got out there, everybody looked very composed. And in fact, you were very unlucky in the first half. Well, yes, uh, Cloyd Whitehead, especially in the f uh, Anglo Scottish games, has been showing some great skills in that and getting some good crosses over. This happened in the first half, and I just hit the post, you know. And then your goal, tell us about that now. Well, uh, Cash kicked the ball up, that's Ray Cashley, and uh, I flicked it on. Tommy Ritchie ran into the corner, drew two defenders out, knocked it back to Clive. Clive did a little bit again on the ball, put it over, and I just got across. I think it was Pat Rice, and then stuck it in. Who are the lads you think might make the biggest impact uh, in the Bristol City side in the first division this season? I don't like to single out anybody. I think they're all good players. And you're very confident now. It's, it's a marvellous start for you. Um, yes, two points on Tuesday. Be welcome against Stoke. But after today, two's good enough at the moment. I've always thought you're a fairly boisterous fellow. You seem very subdued at the moment. Me, I'm oh, a shy lad, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, not subdued. I, I'm just tired. <laughs> after all that running about, I think, I think we'll do well. But what about an Arsenal reaction? Their manager, Terry Neal, said that he was hurt and that he was angry and that he knew that Malcolm McDonald could play a lot better than he did. But where was the vital difference between the two sides? For the answer to that, I went to the Arsenal skipper, to Alan Ball. They were sharper than us. Uh, I, th I think it meant a little bit more to them this first day of the season in the first division than it meant to our lads. And overall, um, you can't take it away from them. They played ever, ever so well. And on the day, as I say, they were a better side. When you say you had a thrash out at the end, what, in the dressing room afterwards, you had an inquest, did you? Well, sort of one, but uh, you don't sort of have them as much these days. You wait till Monday, till the tempers are a, bit, a little bit calmed down. You can look at it very sensibly. Mm. I think that's the right way, but we, we know in certain areas where we went wrong, and as I say, we'll try to put them right on Monday for Wednesday. Do you feel a little sorry for Malcolm McDonald on this particular day? Well, yes. You know, he wanted to do so well as the, the lads for him and the team for themselves, and uh, it didn't work out for him. But he's had his great days and he's had his great debuts, and uh, he's all right. He'll get over it. It's uh, not the end of the world for him. He can score goals and he can play, and we can play, and this is what we've got to get back into our minds for Wednesday night. It's amazing how, you know, when you, you face the start of a season with so much optimism that it can be dampened so quickly. I mean, and, and as you say, it was a poor performance. And it's hard to see how quickly you're going to be able to raise yourself, isn't it? Well, football's a crazy game. You've got to do it. Um, we know where we went wrong. That's the main thing. And uh, the putting right of it is more up in the players' minds than anything else. Tactically, uh, they caught us a little bit unawares, and they played very, very well. And we never got to grips after, uh, after they, they started off very, very well. And I think the front three will trouble lots of defences this year, the way they played today. So, Alan Ball gives a warning to the First Division about Bristol City, and in particular to their three front-runners. And it was Clive Whitehead, just 21, who really caught the eye as much as anybody yesterday, and it was his superb crossing that was always a problem for Arsenal. Here's an example of it. He's aware of so much. He looks up, and he's aware of what's around him, and a delicate little bit of skill there, and Paul Cheesley getting up so well. There, too, was a warning for Arsenal early in the game. I'm lucky to see that ball bounce off the foot of the Arsenal post. But there's a lovely picture coming up now, a real lovely shimmy here by this young Bristol City number 11. Look at him tempting and teasing Sammy Nelson. Look at the balance there on the ball. And then in a moment, a little bit of acceleration. There he goes, hurdling the challenge, getting to the byline. Another delicate little chip, and this time Arsenal get that one away. But in fact, Clive Whitehead also had a big part in the goal. Tom Ritchie had made a, a brilliant run, and in fact is a, a powerful running Scott and will cause a lot of trouble as well. But here's this Whitehead chip again. And from this angle, we see how far Paul Cheesley gets away from that Arsenal defence, a couple of yards from David O'Leary. In fact, not Pat Rice, as he said, into the back of the net for a memorable goal for him to make it a really memorable afternoon for Bristol City and their fans. They were well worth watching.